Howdy folks, Jeff Sangstack here. I want to show you how to use nested sequences. A nested sequence is a sequence placed in another sequence. Sequences can act like clips, and so when you take a sequence that could have multiple clips in it, when you drop it in another sequence, it looks like just one clip. And there are advantages to that. For instance, let's say I've got a whole bunch of uh, images like this, and I want to put a cross dissolve at the end of all of them, to make them all fade out at the end. Well, I can apply five instances of a cross-dissolve transition here, or I can nest these this sequence of these five clips in another sequence and apply one cross-dissolve, saving a little bit of work that way and making them work together. And if I want to put cross-dissolves at the beginning, same thing. Instead of five cross-dissolves here, I can make just one cross-dissolve in another sequence. Sometimes when you're working with uh, objects in motion, if you have more than one object and you want them to move together, it's kind of tough to do in a sequence, so it's best to put those two objects in a sequence and then drop that in so they act together as one clip instead of as two separate clips that you've got to somehow coordinate. So for example here I've got this uh, text right there, a little text title file, and then I've got this little thought balloon down below there. I've combined the two of them and I'm going to have those guys go in motion. And then another reason you might want to use uh, nested sequences, let's say you've got a whole lot of clips and you want to apply an effect to it, like color correction for all the clips to make them all look of the same, have the same kind of color, have the same kind of look and feel. You can apply the color correction one at a time to all of them, one after the other, or you can nest the entire sequence in another sequence and apply just one instance of that color correction. And finally, let's say you've got a really big project, you can break the project up into segments and instead of having one monstrous sequence, you could have multiple sequences that you then later nest into one sequence. It makes it the workflow, workflow a little more uh, manageable. So let's take a look at these. Uh, this first thing, where I've got these little clips that come on. I want to cross this off at the end. Well, it's a very simple matter of taking this sequence and dropping in another sequence and applying a cross dissolve to that thing. So I've got this other sequence that's ready and waiting for me to drop something into it. By the way, you should notice that uh, this sequence that I used to create the graphics is 1920 by 1080. It's HD as is the sequence in which I'm going to drop it. It's best that uh, when you use a nested sequence that you drop it into a sequence that has the same uh, properties, but it doesn't have to be. It's the same settings, but you know, it doesn't have to, but it's you know, best practice to do that. So now I'm going to take the graphic to use as a nested sequence sequence and drop it into this one. And here's what happens. If I drop it in it, it's actually quite large. It's much larger than the space allotted. The space allotted here that I've allotted is about uh, 18 seconds, but this whole thing here is much longer. That's because back in the original sequence, I've got not only this, but I've got two more things in it. So the sequence itself is a little bit more than 40 seconds long. I did that on purpose. Normally you wouldn't to have three separate things like this spread out with gaps in between them uh, to do a nested sequence. You'd probably have just one collection of clips that are all edited together. But I wanted to show you that even this way, you can still trim the sequence down to the point where when this guy ends, which is right where this red line ends there, right there, when this guy ends, you can just cut the sequence there. So I'll take the uh, razor blade tool right there and cut there, go to the selection tool there, and click this guy and just delete it. So now we have this sequence. I'll drag it back down where you'd expect to see it on video one. Kind of a weird little thing happens when you use nested sequences. There's an audio track, an audio portion to this clip, but if you go back to the original one, there is no audio. It's, it's, uh, there is no audio there at all. It's silent, but automatically an, an audio track is created when you nest the sequence, whether there's audio there or not. Okay, now you've got this little guy these guys behaving like that. And all I want to do now is put a cross dissolve at the end. It's very simple. I just uh, go here under video transitions, cross dissolve, cross dissolve, put that at the end. And now they fade out as one unit. Instead of having to put it on five times, I just put it on once. Same thing if I want to put a cross dissolve at the beginning. Just drag it to the beginning. Didn't take. Let me try again here. There we go. And we'll go to the beginning. And there we are. And let's say, oh, you know, I really don't want that map. That map just doesn't work for me. Even the, even the nice little blur there, it just doesn't work. I can go back to the original sequence and say, you know, let's lose the map. So I'll just select the map, press delete, and that sh immediately shows up in the nested sequence. That map is now gone. So you can, you're not stuck with whatever you originally uh, placed, uh, wh what you originally nested. You can always go back to the original sequence and make changes to it. Let's move on to this uh, little video clip here to the right. 
I'll get rid of this guy for the time being. This video clip is just of uh, my daughter heading down the zip line. And I want to put the little thought balloons on next to her as she goes down. So I could put a title here and a thought balloon here as well and try to have them animate together, but that's pretty tedious to get things to animate as one unit, so it's best to nest a sequence to do that. So I'll go back to this little thing that I got here, and I've got this thought balloon that starts with a balloon, and then the words fade on, the words fade out, and then goes to the end. Now I made this thing long enough, about 10 seconds long, so it would cover all of the, sp all of the time that I need to have it cover in the other sequence. In fact, I made it too long on purpose, so I can show you that you can cut it as well. So go back here to the, this little nested sequence demo. Drag this graphic down to it again, and you, kn you know the beginning is going to be those photographs that pop on like that, so we don't really need those guys. But let me go to the point where the little thought balloon pops on, right about there. And I'll use my razor blade tool again and get rid of the stuff that precedes that. Press my V key to switch over to the selection tool, get, click on that and delete it and drag these guys over to where I want them to start. So let's see, where do you want them to start? Right about there is where I want to start seeing that little graphic come on, so that works out pretty well there. Now obviously the graphic is too large, and uh, I need to maybe, sh first of all, shrink it down. So if I had uh, the graphic with text in it and I wanted to shrink them together, I'd have to do them individually, but here I can do it as one unit. So I have this guy selected, click Open Up Motion, shrink down the scale, to a point where it looks like it's going to be right. Drag this thing over. And I'm thinking, you know, um, it's barely fitting there behind her. I think I'd rather have it in front of her, but that darn thought bubble is facing the wrong direction. Well, that can be fixed. Go back to the original sequence. I want the thought bubble, I want these little guys to come down over here instead. So I'm going to apply a horizontal flip to it. So I'm not sure where the horizontal flip is, but there it is under transform, horizontal flip. And now it's switched over, but just the balloon, not the text. If we had done it on the text, it would have made it backwards. Now we go back to this guy, and you'll see that not. Ah, now it's facing the way I want it to face. So I can always go back and change things in the original sequence, and they show up here where you nest it. All right, let me go back to this little thing about setting up the motion. I want to have it, say, start right about there. Let me go back to where she uh, starts moving. Okay, so it's going to pop on screen there, but we'll, we'll dissolve it on in a second. So that's where I'm going to start the motion, right there. So I'm going to put keyframes for the position and scale for that nested sequence here. And we'll go forward a little ways, and I need to change the position. So once you change, th once you change the current time indicator's location and then change the uh, 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 parameter, then you automatically add a keyframe. Let's go a little bit farther down. And we'll take this guy farther down with her. And maybe I'll start expanding the uh, scale a bit. Let me, f let me start making the scale a little bit larger now. And so that's basically the process of having this thing follow the motion. And if I was doing this with two different objects to try to coordinate that, that would be pretty tedious. So now I've done that, and I want to fade it out. So I'm going to cut it there. And now I'm going to go to the uh, place where it fades out in the original clip, right about there is where it starts to fade, right there. So I'll cut that. And I'm going to go back to the selection tool and delete that. And put these guys together. Maybe have it not be quite so exact for right when the moment it fades. I'll probably give it a little bit of slop there, give me some room to use a cross dissolve. OK, let me go to the point where it, uh, the balloon pops off the screen entirely, right there. And cut that. And we'll take this rest of this clip and slide it out of the way for the time being, because we're going to use that in a second. All right, so now I'm going along. And right about this point, I'm, I've changed clips. Now to another clip, so I need to add a keyframe there to continue the motion and continue the scale. Let's keep on going a little bit farther. So we'll move the clip again to follow the motion. A little bit farther. There we go. And now the word's going to start fading out. And now I'm going to put a cross dissolve at the end to fade everything out. So let me go back and add a cross dissolve, video transition, dissolve, cross dissolve at the end. 
didn't quite get it. Try again. There we go. And I'm, that cross dissolves a little long, so I'll make it a little bit shorter. Make it like half a second. Put the same cross dissolve at the beginning. Make it a little bit shorter too. Let's see how that works. Now, I didn't try to ha match the motion exactly, but let's see how this works here. Go down. Yay. There's a little shift there because I didn't quite match the motion directly. I'm going to take this guy here and grab that keyframe there. And add a keyframe there. And select those two keyframes and copy them. Control C, copy. And go to this next clip, which is one frame down. Go to this clip now and put those same keyframes at the beginning by right clicking and going paste. And so that way it, it shouldn't jump anymore. It should go smoothly as it does now. Good. And there's that little process. And now when I want to bring it back, I can add another instance of this graphic and bring that back. And so as you can see, this guy here, I'll go find the part where this thing comes on. There's the thought balloon coming on. I can trim that guy away. Delete it. And we'll slide that over to the point where we want it to come back on, which is right about here, I think. Oops. Let's get that guy over without covering up the video. There we go. We have it pop back on again, have it follow the motion just as we did before. We can do the same same process we did with this other guy, where we have taken this is one long sequence where we sliced it up and been able to apply um, cross dissolves to it, but able to have the motion, have, have the object follow the motion, and uh, even though they're separate portions of a larger sequence, you can see that you can slice it up and uh, move it around. So that's uh, basically a couple of uh, instances of how you use a nested sequence in Premiere Pro.